like to welcome all of you to our time of worship as we gather together for the annual Memorial Angel Tree Service here in Tyne Valley. I'll begin by sharing some announcements for this week. Just a reminder that during the service you're asked to stay seated uh, throughout the service and to keep your masks on. And at the end of the service, we will go out row by row um, and, of course, practice physical distancing. I'm first going to note that we have our mitten tree over here to the left. And we have 168 pairs donated by Dorothy Drummond. Uh, Dorothy will be 89 years old in December, and she's donated to our mitten tree for quite a few years, certainly as long as I've been here. And so we, of course, appreciate her generosity. We use the mittens by distributing them to some local groups, including Kids West, The Play School, John J. Sark, and Ellerslie Elementary and Bloomfield Elementary, so that they can share them with the children. Next week, we worship together in Lot 14 for their Angel Tree service at 10.30. And we have the uh, family service at 9.30 in the morning at Biddeford Conway. As well, today's service will be online at 7 p.m., uh, as well as the Angel Tree next week at 7. Just a reminder that any activities we have in our church buildings requires us, or anytime we do activities in or outside of our church buildings, uh, meetings or, or those kinds of things, we do require to fill out contact tracing forms. The online coffee chats continue on Monday mornings at, 9 at from 9.30 until 10 using Zoom. We have information in the bulletin about the uh, scholarship from the Stewart Memorial, uh, I was going to say auxiliary, I know that's not the right title now. Um, but they have, they have some scholarships and so the information is there in your bulletin. The official board meeting was rescheduled for this Monday night at 7 p.m. online using Zoom. Those are the announcements I have, unless there's any others. And so now I will share our first reading of scripture from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to, for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will to do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now as we gather, come and gather together as people of the light. Come and gather, for God is drawing near. Come and gather, knowing you are not alone. Thanks be. And so I'll now invite Rowena to share in the lighting of our Advent tree. The year has been long, the days even longer, and now we are facing a season of festivity, a time of joyful expectation. Yet joy feels uncertain. The festive spirit seems elusive, for we are a weary people. Even in the midst of our weariness, the journey of Advent still begins, the time of year when we're invited to wait, to slow down, to be present even as we prepare, which means it's okay to be weary. It's okay to wonder what is to come. And so, as we enter this holy, holy season, let us do so trusting that God meets us as we are and where are. 
and let us hold on to hopeful expectation. Hope that there is more to come. Hope that a cry will ring out once again. Hope in a baby. A sign of new life to remind us that chaos and fear can be overcome. And so may the flame of this first candle renew us and give us the hope we need. Please join in the prayer in the bulletin. O oh God of hope, be with us this Advent time as we seek rest for our weary souls. May we find our hope in you as we await those first cries of a newborn baby in a manger. Amen. Now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Our first hymn is number 36, Angels from the Realms of Glory. to the light, 
so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave, him, gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Advent is a time of eager anticipation, a time of waiting, waiting for the arrival of the one who will redeem us from our brokenness. Brokenness within our lives, our families, our communities, our world. And so we open our hearts and minds this day to divine hope as we pray. Loving God, our source of hope, We light this candle. Trusting, Trusting that your ray of hope will come to guide us into wholeness, even in our most broken hours. As we wait with eager anticipation, we wait, too, for the arrival of the one who will redeem us from conflict. Conflict within our thoughts, our families, our communities, our world. And so we open our hearts and minds this day to divine peace as we pray. Tender God, whose will it is that we live in harmony, we light this candle. Trust your of peace, so come to us. There are times when eager anticipation can seem unending, yet we continue. We continue waiting for the arrival of the one who will redeem us from our sorrow. Sorrow stifling our lives, our families, our communities, our world. And so we open our hearts and minds to divine joy as we pray. Compassionate God, who will it is that we share in abundance? We light this candle. Now our third reading of scripture is taken from Psalm 89. Verses 1 to 4 and 19 to 26. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name his 
horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God and the rock of my salvation. Sometimes we grow weary in our waiting, waiting for the arrival of the one who will redeem us from our self-centeredness, self-centeredness that breaks our relationships within our families, our communities, our world, our creator, and yet we continue our journey, opening our hearts and minds to divine love as we pray. Creator God, who designed us to live in loving relationship, with the cosmos and all who share it with us, we light this candle. As we prepare for Christ's birth, may we remember the one who redeems us from our self-centeredness, sorrow, conflict, and brokenness. May we remember the one who will come among us, for the way is aglow with hope, peace, joy, and love. And so, in thankfulness and praise for God's steadfast presence and glorious gift, we give thanks and praise. So now let us pray. O oh God, as we begin this season of Advent, we gather to remember our loved ones who have died and whose presence is gratefully missed. Be with us this day as we recall the love they share. May our memories bring us comfort and joy this day and throughout this season to come. As we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. And since I keep forgetting to find the minute permission book for each of our churches, we'll, we'll move on with our service. We take time now to remember and celebrate the many ways that we share our gifts for the sake of the ministry of Christ's church. The ways we share our time and talents, the ways we share love in so many ways through our gifts. And so now let us pray. Bless now, O oh God, all the gifts we have to offer. May who we are and what we share help continue to spread light and love to all we meet. Amen. Before we share in our closing hymn, I realized I forgot to mention that we would have an offering plate for offering. Um, you're asked to place your offering in the plate if there is any um, before or, af in this case now, after the service. Thank you. See, I knew I was forgetting something earlier with my announcements. So on your way out, you will see a chair with a box of beautiful ornaments. Our Sunday school is doing something different this year to fundraise for the Christmas child. We're not able to do the coffee and muffins that we usually do, so they are making Christmas tree ornaments. And it's free will donation, so you can leave a donation and take one of the ornaments home to decorate your house with. And so you can do that on your way out. There's a little brown box for the donations. Just do your best to be physically distant with one another and only touch the ornament you plan to take. And I will also share, you may be wondering why I'm masked when I've been going without it for other services. Um, last, a week ago Friday, I had gone to visit with my mother in Halifax not expecting that advisories would be retroactive, <laughs> thinking that any advisories that would come out would be afterwards. Um, they ask that uh, you mask at all times when around others for 14 days. And so I'm required to wear the mask to be here with you. Now, I didn't go anywhere but my mother's. Uh, we didn't stop anywhere in Halifax, but the, I, I am following the request of our government. 
And so now we'll share in our closing hymn number 38, Angels We Have Heard on High.